Hi everyone, and welcome to the third ever CARP tutorial video. In this video, I'll be going over the spill suppression features and combining your key with the background. We're now in the spill and noise tab of CARC, and again there are quite a few options to consider. Before we start with despill, I'd just like to say a few words about denoising in CARC, which is the other feature you can find under this tab, right here. I'm just going to mention this briefly and not go into it too much. Basically this is performing a YUV blur with some edge detection on the image before keying it. It's nothing too fancy really, but it can work well for compressed video or used very subtly on grainy footage, it might reduce edge chatter by just enough to make it acceptable. It's a very simple process however, and possibly a placeholder for accommodating better denoising solutions coming to Fusion in the future. Spill suppression, which is separate from the keying process, is new for CAC3, and it's pretty powerful. We should start by setting our output to spill mat. This output will always display the current spill mask, whether or not despill is turned on. This way you can keep an eye on spill at all times. Next, we select the despill type. This determines where the spill is. Currently it supports four modes based on limiting the key color by a combination of the other color channels. You can lower the threshold for the despill, meaning more pixels will be selected. Despill clipping can be used when you don't want despill to happen in very bright areas, like the light source in this image. Especially when you replace the spill with a specific color, this can be useful. And finally, there are three modes for spill replacement. Auto adjust, use the spill replace color, and use the background color. Auto adjust clamps the key color channel based on the spill mat. The other two replace the spill color with color coming from either the spill replace color setting here, or from a background image connected to CUC's background image input. Let's connect a background image here to see how that looks. And lastly, the luminance compensation will make sure that replacing colors using either of the three modes doesn't cause the image to become too dark or bright. You can see the difference when I drag colors around like this with compensation off and now on. Now that we have a background image connected to Kuk, let's set our output to key on background and take a look at the last tab of the tool. This is where we can put some icing on the cake. It allows you to influence your foreground with any background image, also called light wrapping. The wrap image is the image that will be used to wrap around the foreground. By default is the image from the background input and you can blur it or gain it with these sliders down here. The wrap range is the area in which the background will have an influence. We can soften it like this and even add the spill areas of the foreground to it, whether we are despilling the image or not. Clamp background with foreground matte can be very handy when you're dealing with super bright backgrounds. Sometimes even the slightest transparency in a matte can result in your foreground detail being completely blown out by a bright background. We can compensate for this by clamping the background before merging the foreground on top of it. Wrap background brightness matches the luminance of the foreground to the background and wrap background color does the same but with the hue and saturation. With edge color bias we can modify the color and brightness of the edges even further. Background wrap gain takes these three parameters together and gains them up and down. Very convenient when you've adjusted all these to your liking and just wish to make the effect more or less pronounced overall. And finally, all the changes you make here will be part of the key output. You don't have to set output to key on background for this. So your background doesn't have to be the one that you're going to composite this image onto. You can be totally creative with this and then do your merging onto your background outside of CAC. 
With this, we've come to the end of the intro video trilogy. Not quite everything has been covered, and there are lots more little tricks to learn. This will be covered in more in-depth videos. In the meantime, I hope this will get you started. For more information and questions, remarks or requests, please join us in the Fusion Forum at www.stakeunderwater.com slash we suck less. Until next time, this was Peter van Houten. Thank you for watching and have fun with Kak.